So welcome everybody to our Nomasis webinar. My name is Nadine and I'm pleased to introduce to you Thorsten Feind. He will be presenting today. The session lasts about 30 minutes. Please notice that during the presentation your microphones will be set to mute. You may post questions during the session through the chat function or ask them at the end of the presentation. The questions will then be answered by Thorsten. Now I'd like to hand over to Thorsten. Please go ahead. Thank you, Nadine, and welcome everyone. Today, I would like to present you a new capability of Microsoft Intune, the new VPN solution, Microsoft Tunnel Gateway, also often referred to as Microsoft Tunnel. It has been introduced by Microsoft during the last Ignite held in late September 2020. So in the next few minutes, I will talk about the following key topics and what it is all about. In the overview section, I summarize shortly what the Microsoft Tunnel Gateway is. Then I want to show you in the following topic, how it is built and how it works. Next point, displays the architectural design, which describes the routes of existing communication channels. To prepare the setup process, we will have a look at the item prerequisites and talk about the needed different components to start with Microsoft Tunnel Gateway. At next point, I will explain mandatory and optional configuration settings of the Gateway server. And after we took a view at the configuration, I will mention an important consideration before the server is being installed. But I won't take a closer look to individual installation steps as they are very detailed in their description plus exceeds the time limit of this webinar. On this topic, I will provide a web link to the corresponding documentation for those who want to know. Turning to the VPN client, we will have a look at how the corresponding app is made available to iOS and Android devices. Using platform-specific VPN profiles will be mentioned in the next section. Up to this point, we have been talked about the relevant topics for setup and configuration so that I will continue with the focus on updates and monitoring. And finally, I would like to give you a brief look at the takeaways of this webinar. At the end of our webinar, I will answer some FAQs and your questions you want to ask me by chat. So let's start with the session. Although some of you may already have an idea to the question, what is Microsoft Tunnel Gateway? Nevertheless, in the following webinar slides, I will give you a more detailed overview of what Microsoft Tunnel is and how easily it can be established in your current Intune environment. And if I may come straight to the point, with this extension, Microsoft has added an important previously missing element to its cloud-based MDM solution. In short, it is a fully Microsoft Intune integrated VPN gateway solution, which allows access from iOS and Android devices to on-premise applications and resources by using modern authentication and conditional access. This extension of Microsoft Enterprise Mobility and Security will be installed to a Docker container, which runs on a virtual or physical Linux server set up on-premise or in the cloud. Herewith, VPN profiles, each for iOS or Android devices, are being used to direct them passing the tunnel. For finding a decision where the gateway server should be located, it is very useful to consider that if it will be hosted in the cloud, it is absolutely necessary that your on-premise network will be extended to the recording cloud network. Like for example, Azure Express Route, if you host the VM with Azure, Microsoft Azure. Let's first take a look at what Microsoft Tunnel basically consists of and where it will be managed. The gateway management is done from the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center but during the initial setup, the settings like IP addresses, DNS server, and network ports are also being configured. Multiple servers can be used and combined into sites to support Microsoft Tunnel. Sites simplify the configuration of additional servers because they inherit the configuration of the site. VPN profile configurations and features will be pushed to iOS and Android devices to direct them to the Microsoft Tunnel used for its connection type. 
Let me show you the process of end user device communication with the Microsoft tunnel, illustrated by the figure you are looking at right now. Beside the figure, the individual components are outlined with gray letter symbols to the respective terminology. The first yellow highlighted points stands exemplary for the server configuration and associated site the Intune administrator has been configured. While Microsoft Tunnel Gateway is being installed, the authentication plugin authenticates Microsoft Tunnel Gateway with Azure Active Directory at the second point. Herewith, Microsoft Tunnel Gateway server will be assigned to a site. The third itinerary displays the management agent communication where server configuration policies are being retrieved and telemetry logs are sent to Intune. VPN profiles and the tunnel are being created now, and the tunnel app will be deployed to the devices by the Intune administrator. This is what happens on number four. Then at point five, the device authenticates to Azure Active Directory where the conditional access policies are being evaluated. Looking at point number six about VPN with split tunnel, then please have a view on 6A and 6B, where you can see that some traffic goes directly to the public internet and some traffic goes to your public facing IP address for the tunnel, depending which app has been assigned for using the tunnel, whereas apps which are not assigned will bypass it. The seventh and last point of this illustration explains the way which the tunnel routes traffic to a proxy server, if there is one, and finally to your corporate network. Let's come to the prerequisites for a successful installation of Microsoft Tunnel Gateway. The following subjects on this slide are very important and it should be ensured that they are met before starting with it. First, we need a server with a supported Linux distribution that will be used for hosting the gateway server. For example, Ubuntu 2004. Additionally, Docker must be installed on the server to support containers. How to install Docker and which version you should use is being described in the installation documentation of Microsoft Tunnel Gateway. The second point urges us to use a TSL certificate of a trusted public certification authority that contains the public FQDN of the Microsoft Tunnel Gateway server for securing the connections between the devices and the server. Like for example, mst.nomasis.ch. Apart from that, please don't forget to also propagate an A record of the FQDN on your public DNS server. Third, on the one hand, ensure that for gateway functionality, the inbound port 443 for UDP and TCP traffic is open on the server, and on the other, that for flawless interaction with Microsoft Intune, the TCP outbound port 80 and 443 is open as well. Also verify that the public IP address will be added to your external firewall to forward requests on port 443 pointing to the FQDN on the gateway server. And fifth, enable the use of conditional access by adding Microsoft Tunnel Gateway as a cloud app to Azure Active Directory. Finally, Microsoft recommends running the tunnel readiness tool before the tunnel gateway will be installed on the Linux server. The corresponding script checks if the Microsoft Intune endpoints are reachable and validates if the Azure Active Directory account used for Microsoft tunnel installation has the required permissions. The readiness tool script can be downloaded either from Microsoft Endpoint Admin Center or directly by a web browser. On this slide, we can see how it looks like downloading the readiness tool script from Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center and the URL for the direct download by a web browser. The Microsoft Tunnel section within the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center is the starting point for its configuration. What you see on this slide is the Admin Center blade for the tunnel server configuration where you can set up the IP address range in CIDR format to assign a P address list to devices IP addresses for DNS servers used by device DNS requests, and optional DNS suffix search for looking up default domains. 
Also optionally being configured is split tunneling for IP addresses that should not be routed through the tunnel. Furthermore, the port for the gateway will be configured here, which is used for the tunnel app too. The next slide displays the appropriate plate for a site configuration and which the site name, a description, a public IP address, or FQDN, and the server configuration are defined, whereby it must be ensured that the public IP address is publicly routable and the FQDN is publicly resolvable. I already mentioned at the beginning of this webinar that it will exceed its time limit if you would dive into the details for installing Microsoft Tunnel. But at this point, an important aspect of the installation should not be ignored. Therefore, please keep in mind, the configuration must be done before the tunnel is being installed. For those who are interested in the installation details, the following link refers to the Microsoft Tunnel Gateway installation procedure. Well, you don't have to write it down at this moment, as I will provide the link in the FAQ section in the end of our today's session. Let's move to the point on how iOS Android devices can get connectivity to the tunnel gateway. The device specific part of Microsoft Tunnel Gateway is represented by the Microsoft Tunnel app. The device it will be deployed the same way as apps are added to Intune and assigned to users. This app is required for accessing resources through the tunnel. For Android devices, it will be downloaded from Google Play Store and for iOS devices from Apple App Store. With regards to configuration profiles, on the left hand of this slide, we can see now the admin center blade for VPN configuration profiles of enterprise de Android enterprise devices. And on the one for iOS devices just appears on the right. These two, these two figures clearly illustrate that they are obviously slightly different to each other. I will come to this in the next slide. But when we take a look at the current one, you will determine that it is built straightforward to give the necessary capabilities of VPN connections for Intune Tunnel Gateway clients. The platform specific settings for base VPN, connection name, and tunnel site are specified in the blades you saw on the previous slide, whereas the according apps are being assigned in the per app VPN tab. Only apps imported to Intune can be assigned here but they can be public or private. Optional proxy and server settings are available at the proxy tab. And up to here, we can determine that both platforms are being configured the same way. But when we now consider split tunneling, it's important to know that if per app VPN is enabled for iOS platforms, split tunneling rules will be ignored by the iOS device. As you can see, the always on VPN choice for Android, as well the iOS split tunneling rule exemption represent the difference mentioned on the previous slides between both platforms device configuration blades. Well, as we have almost reached the end of this webinar session now, the following topics concerning Microsoft tunnel updates and monitoring should not be left unmentioned. Thus, we will come to them on What's about licensing and costs for using Microsoft Tunnel Gateway? As already mentioned, the main benefits of these solutions are that there is no additional cost for licensing as it is already included in the existing Microsoft Intune license. And additionally, it fully integrates with Microsoft 365. during the update process, the corresponding server will not be available. That's why it's recommended to assign two or more servers to each Microsoft tunnel site to avoid the tunnel being un unavailable during the update process, especially when corporate policies require a 24 seven service. When an update of a server has been processed, then Intune waits a short period of time before the next server will be updated. Furthermore, there are no additional points to consider regarding tunnel updates that we now can hop to the next slide. The last point I would like to present today is about monitoring. 
The current design provides three ways to monitor the gateway for reporting and troubleshooting purposes. The user interface of Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center applies to view the server configuration and server health. While in preview, health status only shows whether the server has connected in the last five minutes or not. Since this is not very helpful, neither for reporting nor for troubleshooting purposes, Microsoft has been announced that they will add enhancements in the future with additional details. A more detailed overview can be obtained by using the command line tool MSTCLI, which must be executed on the corresponding server. In order to deal with it, it's worthy to learn something about the command line reference for Microsoft Tunnel Gateway. And the most detailed information about tunnel traffic are provided if server logs will be collected and retrieved in the Linux server logs in syslog format. Using the Jural CTLT command, followed by one or more tags. Taking the command by using OCServe applies to get server logs. By using MS Tunnel Agent applies to obtain logs about the management agent. And by MS Tunnel Monitor applies to display monitor task logs. Now that we have come to the end of this presentation, I hope I could convince you of the simplicity of implementation and management, the benefits, licensing and costs, as well as it integrates with Microsoft 365. And last but not least, that it has been provided valuable information for you and your organization to take away the key points to help you evaluate the possible adoption of this new feature of Microsoft Intune. However, we would, we would be pleased to support you in any questions regarding implementing Microsoft Tunnel Gateway into your Microsoft Intune environment. So please don't hesitate to contact us. All right, you might have already some questions, but let me first answer some frequently asked questions before we come to the point where you can ask questions by chat. Which Linux distributions are supported? You can use CentOS 7.4 and later, but version later, but version 8 isn't supported yet. Also, Red Hat 7.4 and later, but version 8 isn't supported yet either. Supported Ubuntu versions are 18.04 and 20.04. Microsoft recommends using at least version 19.03 corporate edition for the Docker version. How many concurrent connections are supported? Microsoft Tunnel supports up to 64,000 concurrent connections at one server, whereby it should be made aware that individual devices can open multiple connections. And maybe the last and most important question, when will this feature be available? At the moment, Microsoft Tunnel is in the preview phase, but it's already 100% functional. Future enhancements will be released together with regular updates. It is expected that Microsoft will fully support this feature soon, but no date has been announced yet. If you want us to keep you informed about the release, please contact our sales team or just email us at info at Thank you very much, Torsten, for giving us an overview about this really interesting topic. Um, until now, I did not receive any further questions, we will end this webinar. If later questions arise, don't hesitate to contact us at any time. And uh, thank you all for joining and have a nice evening.